Hello. The concerns have been rising. And I've been having a lot of fun anyways. So at the current point in time, we know that Monica knows... Monica knows something. Monica knows that she's a program. I'm pretty sure. Don't mind my face. Um, Sayori seems to have problems. So does she. She's annoying. She seems to have some dark undertones. Like they both they both seem like they all seem like they have problems. And she just seems like a fucking serial killer. So we are well going to her, so Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, that felt that follows really well too. <laughs> Entropy, yeah, yeah. Contamination, big words, big words. Oh fuck! It wasn't her. <laughs> No! I don't want her to like it! There we go, okay, there we go. There we go. Yep. 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 Ellen, Kali! I got her. I, I, I got enough. Like, I think I got two Sayaris. Aw, oh, man. And the last one here again. I'm concerned about you, Monica. Don't worry, I just walked into. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you always have a lot of determination. Oh, Camden's playing too. <laughs> oh, I didn't have myself in Discord. Oops. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. Good point. And I'm super happy. Happy. I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out with the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for this festival. She's got the cute fang tooth. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part in the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Yeah, it's true. So, but like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried, fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying that you don't like the squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Oh, Ika is squid. Monica. Eh? That's not how you may say my name at all. Also, that makes, jo makes no sense in translation. Yeah, no, no. She's 100% self-aware. Yep. She's 100% aware. Yeah, no, she knows. She knows. Fuck. Don't just focus on her own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at his desk in the corner room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Uh, eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Oh, that's that's not a good sign. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Well, you're brooding in the corner. Uh, sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine. See? Sorry you're showing me a big smile. See, that that's that's a telltale sign of you're hiding depression. 100%. Well, all right. If you say so. I weirdly glance at Sayori before turning back where bleh, I'm looking at everybody else. The conversation is ever dispersed and everybody's back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's known anything about Sayori recently. I'm worried about Monica. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must have been spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling some papers at her desk. Griffin, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but 
Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little bit too much. But she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who's idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the... I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Griffin. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked, she was really dismissive. So I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. I also care about the well-being of my club members. You know. Maybe I'll try talking to myself. Hey, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time ringing up with a person of interest. Person of interest? But you, oh yeah, she likes me. That's not a surprise. I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Griffin. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? That's fairly fucking obvious, buddy. Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks a lot about you more than anything else, you know? Eh, she's been much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light has turned on inside her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different than now that it's always been. <laughs> you're so funny, Griffin. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Hmm? I said too much. Yeah. Yeah. She's constantly depressed. I I'm sorry. What do I know anyways? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about that for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meanfully. I don't trust you! I know she's had to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to forget her words out of the back of my head. Monica stands from her desk and walks across the room to watch Sayori sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice quiet so that I can't hear her from here. I wonder that's... <laughs> I sigh and sit myself down. Knowing Sayori taught me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, that's impossible to do when she's paid me like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? That I'm letting this way on me so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance on around the room. Yuri. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away. Just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. Oops. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in, a, in one next to her own. Ooh, a, different, a change in music. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts. How are you even able to tell I was thinking like that? Well... It's something I do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot you based on your posture and expression. Not, not that I was staring or anything. I didn't want to do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are the only cons the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Oh... Oh! <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Oops. Uh, I didn't want to click that. Sayori? Yeah, she still seems a little bit off today, but when she asked me about it, she didn't seem to want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if there's something has happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. No, it's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, and that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading it into it a little bit too much. Griffin. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind you for every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think that there might be a, something behind it after all? Mm-hmm. I think Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what's going on inside her head. Yeah, I can tell that. 
and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too, and also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess, but you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Harry suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she's searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware of in, were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Gary, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think that I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not really as sophisticated as you. <laughs> That's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyways, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyways. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder if she's talking about with Sayori. I worry what she was talking about with Sayori, because I don't know if that was all good things. Who should I show my phone to first? Well, there is only one solution to that problem. Yuri! I always get the fucking ellipses. Griffin. Your writing has only improved these past few, last few days. Every poem you've shown me has gotten been nothing sort of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think I could ever... This... It ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much because thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri smiles to herself. This feeling? I'm so glad I got the chance to share it in my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, she smiles sadly. Griffin, during lunchtime I ate by myself. You know that? Well, that was actually probably fairly obvious. It was great to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But... Books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. If you want to fall in love with... Yeah, you're in love with a book character. I know. It's, so am I. When people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my own body type. And... They don't hate me for like acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Griffin. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. You listened. Being patient and respectful, that's such a big and important thing for so many people. That, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Griffin. I speak too slowly, I second guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. That's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see that it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. I would say that I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Hmm. If you put it that way, yeah. Ooh, the blush. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. You want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. 